Hello there, I'm Rahila Mohammed. The World Health Organization says the Omicron variant is spreading so fast that the numbers of cases could overwhelm health systems. Lawmakers in the UK approved new COVID-19 restrictions. Cases there are surging. Health authorities say infections relating to the Omicron variant are doubling every two to three days. Initial findings from South Africa suggest that Omicron may be less severe than the Delta variant, but the head of the WHO warns that it should not be underestimated. 77 countries have now reported cases of Omicron, and the reality is that Omicron is probably in most countries, even if it hasn't been detected yet. Omicron is spreading at a rate we have not seen with any previous variant. We're concerned that people are dismissing Omicron Micron as mild. Surely, we have learned by now that we underestimate this virus at our peril. Mohamed Bounir is a viral infection and vaccine expert in Lancaster, England. He says the spread of the Omicron variant should be taken seriously. I think we have a very limited data on the severity of the disease, to be fair. But what we know that this virus is highly transmissible. And by now, we have data from South Africa, we have data from uh, Norway, with Denmark, and the United Kingdom. And all these four countries clearly indicate that this is transmissible, that is breaching the um, immunity that is already established either by the vaccine or the previous infection. And these are the characteristics of the viruses that would become very successful and would become the most predominant uh, strain. Um, around the world. And that is uh, what we have seen with the Delta and Alpha variant when they emerged in the beginning. We had a lot of information about the transmission because that is easy to study. But on the severity, it took at least five weeks before we have a conclusive result. But based on the data that is coming out from the UK and from the South Africa, it appears to be that the overall uh, severity of the disease is less and very few people needed uh, an uh, external source of oxygen, which is really good news. And let's hope that it, it, it stays like that. Meanwhile, the U.S. Congress held a minute's silence to remember the 800,000 people who died from COVID-19 in the country. The ceremony was attended by members of the Senate and House of Representatives from both political parties. The United States has lost more people to the pandemic than any other country. Well, here's a look at some other stories making news around the world. Russia's Supreme Court has postponed a trial against Memorial, one of the country's top human rights groups, until the end of the year. Supporters are calling on authorities not to dissolve the group. It's accused of violating laws, limiting ties with what Russia calls foreign agents. U.S. President Joe Biden will travel to Kentucky to assess the damage from devastating tornadoes. 88 people were killed in storms at the weekend, with Kentucky the hardest hit. Tens of thousands of residents are now without power, heating or running water. Officials are warning it could take weeks to restore services. A truck carrying gasoline has exploded in northern Haiti. More than 60 people have been killed and dozens injured. Officials say the blast happened in the city of Cap Hatien. Three days of national mourning will be observed. Almost four months since the NATO forces withdrew from Afghanistan, the country's economy and healthcare system are on the verge of collapse. Basic medical services are in short supply. Doctors and nurses are underpaid or not paid at all. And many children and babies are now being treated for malnutrition. Aid groups say around 23 million people could face starvation this winter. Here's the picture from just one hospital in Kabul. This pediatrician in Kabul is trying to save the life of a newborn. But his options are limited. There's hardly any medication left. All the children on this ward are malnourished. It's a catastrophic situation, and the doctors are furious about it. If you really want to know what's going on here, just ask us. His colleague elaborated. We don't have uh, good medicine in our country. Not in our hospital, but in our whole country. It's a big problem. 
yeah, because uh, the, the open uh, markets is available uh, all of local of uh, medicine. We don't have original medicine and effective medicine for our patients. This is a big problem in Afghanistan. It's a battle that doctors lose almost every day. That's how weak the children are. Fatima Ahmadi's triplets were born prematurely and need intensive care, something this hospital cannot provide. But the 25-year-old still hopes her babies will survive. That's why we came to Kabul. We no longer have any income. My husband has lost his job. We have three children. Our financial situation is extremely difficult. We met Sadullah Ayabi in the corridor of this hospital. He belongs to the security forces of the Taliban, but his child is also suffering from hunger. The worried father, too, hasn't been paid for months. One of his children has already died from malnutrition. The pediatricians are trying their best to save his other child. So we have these kind of patients in uh, winter man because uh, they are poor poverty and the weather is very uh, cold. They can't afford, they can't warm their houses. So most of the patients get pneumonia, severe pneumonia, and then after that they go into malnutrition. Nurses and doctors in this hospital have been working around the clock for four months without pay. Afghanistan's foreign reserves have been frozen since the Taliban takeover. The country's health system has been left without sufficient funds. NGO Save the Children is calling for aid to be made available again. It is absolutely crucial that um, international donors provide uh, assistance and help avoid the collapse of the economy and keep basic services running. For many mothers, the hospital is their last hope. But doctors are becoming increasingly desperate as they are barely able to help their patients. You're watching DW News live from Berlin. Up next is our COVID-19 special. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.